Mike Radich here, and I'm now joining the phone by XFC welterweight Alex Trevino. Alex, how are you? I'm okay. Alex, you got a fight coming up December 13th at XFC 27. Before we get to that fight, um, I'm just curious. It's been a while since we've seen you in action. Um, give us an update. What have you been doing? Why haven't we seen you fight since September of 2012? Give us an update. What have you been up to? Uh, I've just been working on uh, uh, my trucking business uh, part, uh, with the family and stuff. Trying to get my money right so I can actually focus on training. Nowadays, you know, you got to have some money. Otherwise, you can't, you know, focusing on training makes it way harder. Mm-hmm. For a while, you were training out in California, Northern California to be specific. Just curious, you've moved back now to Michigan. How long have you been back? Uh, I've been back, uh, how long have I been back? Oh, man, when did I? I would say a few months, several months now. Mm -hmm. I just moved back. I had, uh, uh, yeah, moved back several months ago. But I'd spent just the past month training in Northern California in, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Gracie Fighter Lodi out there, Nick Diaz, Gracie Fighter Academy. Right. Just curious, why did you decide to move back to Michigan? Was it because of the family trucking business, or was there other circumstances that made you move back? Uh, There were some other circumstances that made me move back. I mean, the trucking business is pretty mobile, you Mm -hmm. know. Right. Do do all my stuff everywhere. Mm Mm-hmm. Just curious, when you were living in Northern California and you weren't home in Michigan with the trucking business, what were you doing to support yourself? Because you've been, you know, off and on. You've been inactive, and then you've you've had fights, and then you've you've been inactive yeah, again. Yeah, my family, you know, the family, the trucking business. My dad, he really helped me out a lot, and I just pinched a hell of pennies. You know, I worked a few like part time jobs here and there. You mm-hmm. know, it was just really really tough eating like little Caesar's pizzas for two right. meals, and then uh, then I had a. a my ex-girlfriend, I lived with her for a little while, and, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. Just curious, why haven't you been very active? You know, you fought just once in 2009, or excuse me, you fought twice in 2009, once in 2010, once in 2011, and once in 2012, and now uh, this fight on December 13th will be your only fight of 2013. What has caused this we well, you know, fight? when I first started, I was signed with Frank, uh, Frank Shamrock right. and his, what I think is MMA Stars. Right. Oh. Uh, organization and then we parted ways and i started managing myself and there were i i had numerous fights that fall through i mean that's another thing that made it really really bad it was like mm-hmm. if i had all my fights like you know there would probably be an extra three or four fights in each year at least mm-hmm. you know lined up it always seemed like you know training for a fight opponent pull out fights go out you know what i'm saying stuff right. like that injuries one injury i injured myself one time i injured myself to you know, stuff like that. And then, you know, yeah, pretty much is about it. Fights falling through, fights picking up. It's never, you're never really guaranteed a fight in this industry until you're in the cage fighting or, you know, you're at the weigh-ins and it's the next day, you know, stuff like that. You know, sometimes it's just, I've learned the hard way. Like, it was just, it's not something, it's not a real forgiving sport. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You were supposed to have I really f- didn't, and honestly, I didn't think I was ever going to fight again. I thought, you know, my last fight there in 2012 was like the end of it. You know, I think that, yeah. And then, uh, I mean, they came into my hometown. I was like, you know, I've been trucking for a while, so I had lost. I, I had, like, you know, I'd gained on, like, because there for two years, I didn't need any uh, meat, you know. I, so I was pretty lean all the time, right around 160, 64, 65, walked around around there. Very, very few, very, you know. No processed meat, at least. You know, I eat fish and shrimp and stuff like that. I think it's called pescatarian. Right. You're a pescatarian. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, when I started trucking, I just started eating whatever, living like that trucker lifestyle. And I put on, like, I was almost like 200 pounds. And then they called me a few months back and was like, yo. And I was like, you know, I can't just be letting people come in my hometown and have a fight, you know, especially a nice pro fight, nice pro organization like the XFC, you know, and come in here and, uh, go fight without me here. This is like my area. You understand? Mm-hmm. I right. grew up like 20 minutes away right. from where this thing's going down. Mm-hmm. 
Definitely, definitely. Now, you mentioned that you were thinking about retiring after your last fight. Uh, Just curious, why did those thoughts of retirement creep into your head? Was it because of the way the fight went? You you were finished for the first time in your career? No, no, listen, all right, this is first things first. I took that fight in two weeks' notice because I got in an argument with my dad a while before I started the trucky business, so Mm -hmm. I was unprepared. I fought a guy who had been fighting for a while. I was in a very tough guy that that guy was coming out of a very tough camp. Uh, Maybe two weeks of that fight. That fight was like, and that's how like most of my losses came. The first loss I had was like, that was a 12 hour notice on some bull crap letting, you know, my uh, personal trainer who, my conditioning kind of get in my head a little and that was more for money, you know. Never once was it just be like, oh, this dude's really like kicked my ass or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Like I totally was unprepared. That one's on me and no, it was had nothing to do with that. It had everything to do with just like, you know, I'm, um, I want to have a family, and I want to, you know, I want to want to be a good, you know, man that takes care of himself. I don't want to be some dude bouncing around like a fucking fighter bum, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, living hand to mouth, and you know, not being able to take care of himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes the game a whole lot harder. You know what I'm saying? Like right. you're not able to just go in there and be like, all right, I'm really going to work on this today or that today. You're more like in there working on something, whatever someone says, and you're kind of thinking in your head, like, damn, what am I going to eat after I'm done here? How the hell am I going to get another $20? Mm-hmm. No. Right, right. And, I mean, it, it was surprising when I when I heard you say uh, stuff about retirement because uh, uh, the fight before that when you fought Eric Moon, you knocked him out in the first round, and that was a, a very impressive performance. So I was surprised to hear that you were thinking about hanging it up. Yo, it was like, you know, and, and if you really see any of you, you know, you didn't really know this, so there were several fights since then that fell through. Like, I was supposed to fight, like, a couple months later, then a couple months later, and it's like, you know, you get six weeks into a camp, four weeks into it, you find out you got a new opponent or your opponent fell through or this or that. It's always something, man. Nothing has ever really been handed to me in this game. Oh, that's about all I got to say. Mm-hmm. You brought up Frank Shamrock earlier. I'm just curious, why did that relationship end? Was it kind of just, you know, he has so many other things that he's involved in and he kind of just didn't have time? Uh, anymore? You know, what, what happened? Y- yeah, the... It was just, uh, you know, I parted ways with a, a strength and conditioning trainer and she was partners with uh, Frank and, he, you know, it was just... It was the right business move for him to let me go as well, so that's kind of how that went, you know. And uh, we parted ways, and that was it. Mm -hmm. This fight coming up on December 13th, you mentioned uh, it's basically in your hometown. You're from Montague, Michigan. This fight's going to be taking place in Muskegon, Michigan. Um, Just curious, the the deal with XFC, is that basically how it came together? You're a local guy. It's a local fight card. It, It makes sense to have you on it. Was that what they wanted like, to have a local guy or I guess, I guess they uh, you know they heard my name so mm-hmm. I mean you know you come around this little area you start throwing a professional MMA and fight shows and stuff around you know you, I'm gonna pop up and then right. like it isn't like I haven't fought anywhere you know I'm like my resume is pretty legit as far as the fights that I do have there you know what I mean mm-hmm. and promotions and stuff and that's just kind of how it all you know fell into place and uh is this just a one-off with XFC, or is it something where if you do well on December 13th, it could lead to a multiple fight deal? Yeah, it could lead. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I guess that can pretty much always be the case, right? If they like right. you and they like what you do and you do good, why wouldn't they want to keep you? You know what I mean? Stuff like that. So that's all in the, 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 those that, those like questions will all be answered on the 13th. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? How right. I do and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Now, are you back training with the guys that you started your career with, um, you know, way back when? Are you, are you back at your original gym, or have you switched over to, to different training? You know, could you explain uh, uh, where you Like I said, it's like, uh, well, all right, uh, this is kind of like, I, I was a boxer. I never really meant to do MMA. I mm-hmm. kind of stumbled upon it back way back when, and then I moved to California, Northern California, and then just stuck with that part of that. I was just going to be a boxer, and you know, I was going to be a boxer, so... There really wasn't no MMA camps that I was uh, around in uh, any gym from a really small area, small town, like a lot of gyms come and go. Uh, but, you know, I just got to say, like, you know, big respects to where I train, you know, which is a uh, uh, Gracie Fighter in Northern California. I was in Stockton, the Gracie Fighter Academy, Lodi. 
uh, something in my truck the last month, you know, training there, and those guys are they're just freaking awesome, and everything about them is cool, you know. And Nate Diaz, Nick Diaz is, is freaking, they're, they're, they're like, super cool, you know. Mm-hmm. That was it, and then I trained some, you know, past times, and just just train over with the scrap pack. You know, I gotta say big ups to them too, because they're they're. Hey, if you're in that area and you train out there, you know, you know what I'm saying. Those those are legit, man. Those places are the places to be. Those they get down, but yeah, I spent the last month in uh, uh, Lodi, California, training. So, mm-hmm. just curious, who's gonna be cornering you for this fight? Uh. Probably my uh, my boxing trainers. That's that's who we got in the mix right now from Michigan. My boxing coach is from Michigan. Hmm. I see. I see. Long time, long time amateur coach from Michigan, and you know, uh, amateur uh, Golden Gloves coach and stuff like that. You know, mm-hmm. it's not you know it's not cheap to just fly everybody out here. Or, you know, anything of the matter like that. So right, right now. You fought a handful of times for Strike Force in the past. I'm just curious what happened with them. I mean, you you had a, a three and one run with Strike Force. Uh, why did yeah, why didn't you, know, you get? I, the, you know? And then and then I had two fights on Strike Force fall through that you know aren't really in the book. It was that Ben Holster right there, the Strike Force challengers. Uh, he had got injured the week of the fight. I got a call on a Monday. Told me that dude was injured. He would probably never fight again. Mm-hmm shoulder messed up and then uh and then the same card that uh was it Verdum so Fedora I was I was matched up on that card too there at the HP and uh uh like I don't know a few weeks before that I think it was like two or three two weeks before that I went over on like a win went to Grappler's Quest in Las Vegas and I snapped my finger in half like the dude put my finger way over in the back of my like i looked at it and my right ring finger was like over by my wrist (laughs) you know what i mean i was like what the hell and then i just snapped it back and like i literally like just grabbed it snapped it back and was like what the fudge (laughs) and just like you know and then so they had to cat and and when it snapped it snapped right by the base by the knuckle you know what I'm saying? Right. Like right there at the base, and when they cast it, they had to cast my whole hand up. Well, um, so I stopped that, and then you know it wasn't too long after that they sold out. Mm-hmm. Uh, just curious, with you having you know this kind of on and off again relationship with this sport, you you fight, and then for a while you go away for various circumstances, whether it's injuries or opponents backing out or or offers just not being right. Um, how much do you think it's um, stunted your growth in this sport? You know, having a fight and then not fighting for you know a well over a year again. You know, uh, how how much do you think it's hurt you? Uh, yeah, you know, it probably hurt some too. But what do you say? It's, it's just like you know, it's my life. What am I supposed to do? It's not like most. The whole reason is most of the time wasn't because I didn't have whatever, and I didn't just you know, I didn't. I'm not the type of person that wants to just fight for nothing. Mm-hmm. You know. That's how I feel. I mean, it may be a stunt in my growth, but I really don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I mean, that's just how it is. Like, whatever. I'm not going to go fight somebody just because you're going to give me, like, what, like 500 bucks? Like, are you crazy? You know, this is like, like, I I can go out here. I ain't got insurance. You know what I'm saying? I've been fighting my whole career, no insurance. Like, who's going to pay my doctor bills if I get smashed up, you know? And it, that ain't the reason why I haven't fought, you know? The whole reason, like I said before, it, like, you, you have no idea how many fights would you line up a fight and fall through. You line up a fight and fall through. I mean, you can just go down the list. There's, this isn't just me. This probably happens to hundreds of millions right. of people across the country. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, nothing's more concerning. I mean, you know, I mean, more disconcerting than that, you know? Now, going forward, on December 13th, you're going to be fighting uh, Dave Chakran. Uh, how much do you know about him? Uh, I, mean, I, don't, I mean, I don't know a great huge deal about the guy. I mean, I never really know a huge deal about anybody I fight, you know, because each fight, to me, in my head, each fight is different. Mm-hmm. You know, I know, like, yo, that they're pretty tough, or, oh, this guy likes this, or maybe, like, a couple things here or there. You know, watch a video once or twice or something like that. But you know, what people, what 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 my record don't say is how much experience I have. You know what I'm saying in right. combative sports. 
you know, like I've been in this shit since I was 10 and I'm 32 years old, you know, I've been around it a lot and I know, watch a lot of the stuff, it's like, yo, if you can ever tell me when someone goes out and does the same thing twice, it's kind of like lightning, you know what I mean? Right. Like, don't normally get struck the same time twice, you know, there are those few cases, but, so I don't really know a whole bunch about him, you know, I'm just uh, going off what I think I know, and that'd be the, you know, he's a tough guy, because anybody who gets in there is real tough, and, uh, you know, and he's coming off a loss, I know that, so... No, he ain't fucking around. He's coming to kick my ass. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, no, that's about it. And I'm going to be here waiting, mm-hmm. you know, to get my ass kicked, so <laughs> so they say. Mm-hmm. Now, this fight is going to be airing live on Access TV, and, and you mentioned it earlier. You're, you're a veteran of this sport, even though your record doesn't show that because of the inactivity, but you've been around for a long time here, you're not just coming off the street and then fighting this fight. You you've been around for a while. Um, how much are you looking forward to performing for an audience who maybe has never seen you fight before? Oh, uh, you know, I mean, I really thought about it until you brought it up. You know, sometimes I'm just more worried about. Yeah, man. I mean, I could really give two shits. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna fight my heart out. I'm gonna try my best. You know. I'm just going to do my best. That's all I can say. All God can say to me and all anybody can tell me to do is do my best. You know, if I get wrapped up in what this is going to be like and what that's going to be like, then I'm not just going to, you know, I'm going to be trying to do this or do that. I just want to do my best, man. And uh, if I really like it, you know, that's cool. That all these people who've never seen me fight get to see me fight, and maybe they like the way I fight, or maybe they don't. You know what I mean? Those things I'm not really going to wrap my head around. More importantly, the fact that, like, you know, like, my teammates from uh, California can see me on that day is really important and you know I'm more looking you know I'm just more thinking about like my immediate family you know right outside the ring and uh, and my uh, friend in California so I just focusing on that right now you know as far as the people who haven't seen me fight that'd be really you know that's really cool you know what, what can you say mm-hmm are you going to have a pretty good crowd there? Because, like you mentioned earlier, you're basically from the area, I think, uh, Montague. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, you know, I do my best. You know, mm-hmm. like I said, man, I never really, like, I'm just trying to do my best, man. That's all I can say. <laughs> Excuse me, that's all I can say. I'm just trying to have fun and do my best. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not all, like, I don't know what to say. There's not, like, a lot of smoke and mirrors happening with me right now. You know, it's just, like, I'm going to do my best and... You know, I don't know if I'm going to be, like, you know, like, hugely great crowd, but, you know, it's like when they say me, they'll know me. Mm-hmm. If they're from the area, you know, a lot of people know me, an older crowd will know me. Whether or not the younger generation knows me or whatnot, that's still to be determined, but I should get a couple of screams. Mm-hmm. You know, my family will be there trying to get loud, so. On December 13th, will you be wearing your famous pink spider trunks? Will those be making a return? <laughs> Oh, uh, they might. They might. I haven't really decided. There's a few things I'm still, like, working on right now. But one of them is for sure. I, I have no idea what I'm walking out to. Oh. Like, I have no idea. I'm still trying to figure that song out. Oh, <laughs> I see. So I, always used to, I used to walk out there for a while to uh, Kanye West, Touch the Sky, and then, like, uh, and I did, like, Coming Home the last time I fought Michigan, mm-hmm. and then... Think we're the champions last time, but I, I, I don't know, man. I'm just trying to, like, you know, wrap my head around what I want to come out to. Mm-hmm. Just curious, where did the whole pink spider trunks uh, start? You know, wh- why do you wear those? Um, you know, because people, I mean, it, it was a while ago, but people kind of knew you by that for a while there. Uh, where did yeah, that yeah, start? Yeah, they knew me by the trunks in right. my cup, you know. Right. Uh, yeah, the trunks, just because I um, try to catch eyes, you know. Mm-hmm. What can you do, you know? trying to be seen and then and around when I first wore them like you said people knew me because nobody really wore them you know right. nobody does. now it's like you know everybody does crazy shit right uh, so it's not such a big deal and then yeah real quick before I let you go do you have any sponsors you like to thank and is there anything you'd like to yeah, say to yeah yeah I want to thank uh, uh, I got a couple of things I want to thank Acho Caters Clothing um that's my clothing line it's, I got going, and uh, you go over on Facebook, and like I said, Acho Caters Clothing. Follow us on Instagram, stuff like that. 
Um, the, the website's under reconstruction right now, but it will be up shortly again, uh, www.agilecaters.com. Trevino Trucking is probably the biggest thing in the world to me. Uh, my dad and his business that he built uh, sponsored me for many, many years, and they were my only sponsor that you know made sure I was taken care of and could train with the best. And uh, TrevinoTrucking.com, if you need cars moved, you got to go there. And uh, my uh, and Advocare. Uh, they they help with some supplements this time, so I'd like to thank those people. Mm-hmm. Alex, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it, and best of luck coming up on the thirteenth. Yeah, thank you too. Oh, and I'd like to thank the XFC. It's really cool, you know, they're coming into a small town like Muskegon and putting it on. I don't know how it all fell into place, but it's cool that it did. You know, 